Hello everyone. Uh, this is the last lecture of this week, means week six. Uh, what we have been doing uh, since last four or five lectures are, uh, uh, we have been discussing influence line diagram for statically determinate structures, right? Uh, we, uh, we learned uh, what is uh, influence line diagrams. Uh, then we, we saw how to draw influence line diagram for different internal forces. And then also we saw that uh, for different four systems, how that influence line diagram can be used uh, to find out internal forces. For instance, if the external load is a concentrated load or external load is uniformly distributed load or external load is uh, a train of uh, concentrated load, we have seen that how to find out the internal forces for a given location of, uh, of those, inter those external forces uh, in a member. What we will do today is we will learn a very interesting way of uh, uh, drawing influence line diagram without actually uh, solving the problem, without actually computing the or writing the equations of uh, the internal forces as a function of x. Uh, you see, as of now we have not yet discussed uh, statically indeterminate structure, but uh, solving statically indeterminate structure is not as trivial as uh, determinate structure, which is obvious because there it is not only the equilibrium equations, there are other conditions needs to be applied. In many cases, we need to solve uh, those equations iteratively. So, you see for each internal force system finding the and for each location finding the influence line diagram for statically indeterminate structure is a very tedious job. So, uh, the, the, the procedure that we are going to learn today uh, is uh, though we will demonstrate through statically uh, determinate structure, but that can be a very advantageous for find down, uh, finding influence line, influence line diagram for indeterminate structures. Okay. The, the method is uh, called muller breslau principle. This is uh, the method uh, simultaneously almost they, um, they pro proposed by Muller and Breslau during 1886 and 1887. Before we, act, before we state the principle, let us understand what is the under underlying philosophy behind this principle. Okay. Uh, but before that, let us recall, uh, if you remember uh, during um, uh, when we discussed about virtual walk method, uh, we discussed uh, Betty's law, Betty's theorem and this theorem says, just a quick uh, recall of the theorem that if you have a system 1 and system 2 uh, and in system 1 we have a force, is force like P1 and P2 and system 2 is Q1 and this is the deflected shape in system 1 and system 2. And then now, if this delta Q P 1 is the deflection uh, in uh, system 2 in the direction where P 1 is applied in system 1 and delta P Q delta Q P 2 is uh, the deflection due to Q 1, but it is in the direction um, and the location at P where P 2 is being applied. And similarly, um, uh, the P, P delta P Q 1 is the deflection in the structure uh, in system 1. Um, due to P1 and P2 forces, but in the direction of Q1 and the position of Q1. And if we have a system 1 and system 2, then then what we what Betty's theorem says that, um, and there will be a summation here, uh, says that, uh, that force in system 1 multiplied by uh, the force field in system 1 multiplied by the deflection field in system 2. Uh, is equal to force field in system 2 multiplied by the deflection field in system 1 and summation. There, a, this is the summation, but uh, it should be somewhere here. Okay. So, at least if we apply this theorem here, then it says that P1 into this, this, this deflection plus P2 into this is equal to Q1 into this. So, this is Betty's theorem. We will see that the reason why we just quickly reviewed Betty's theorem because uh, the, the principle, underlying principle that we will be using to derive the um, to prove the uh, muller breslau uh, principle is uh, Betty's, uh, Betty's theorem. Okay. Now, let us understand what this principle says. Okay. Suppose, um, 
this is a beam uh, A, B, C. You see as I said this is uh, applied for statically indeterminate structure as well. So, the proof and the uh, and the and the introduction of this principle will be done through statically indeterminate structure, but rest of the ex examples problem will 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 see only for determinate structure. Okay. So, this is as you can this is a statically indeterminate structure because the number of uh, number of uh, uh, constraint we have is 2 here, 1 here and 1 here, total number of constraint is 4 and then equilibrium equations available is 3. So, it is an indeterminate structure. Now, suppose we applied an unit load at a distance x from A and the corresponding deflection of this beam is this. Okay? Now, now, let us take the same beam once again, but what we do, uh, suppose we, we, are, we are here, we want to find out what is the, uh, what is the influence line diagram for say reaction at E. Okay. Now, so this is the same beam. Suppose now next we remove the constraint A, remove the constraint at A means since we are we, we want to first determine what is the influence line diagram for vertical reaction. So, removing constraint means removing the vertical constraint. Okay. So, this move A, the point A can move in vertical direction, but still it cannot move in horizontal direction. Okay. Now, then apply a force say F A at this point. Now, if we apply a force like this, then, then the beam may deflect like this. Okay. And suppose this distance is delta A. So, delta, de, delta A is the deflection at point A uh, due to force F A. And what is the direction of the force? Direction of the force is in the direction, uh, direction of the constraint uh, for which we want to find out the influence line. Okay. In this case, it is A y. Okay. Now, uh, suppose now this is the unit load uh, acting on the beam and suppose the corresponding deflection uh, here when the load is uh, uh, load is F y is delta x. So, delta x essentially is the deflection at this point due to the external load due to a load F a at point a, but the position and direction of delta x is uh, consist is, is according to the unit load 1 here. So, unit load at this point. Okay. So, it is in the direction of unit load and at the location of the unit load. Okay. Now, uh, let us just replace those, those supports by their equivalent reaction forces. So, this is the support A is replaced by A y, B is replaced by B y and C is replaced by C y. Now, if please note that here it is not A y, it is A y 1, B y 1 and C y 1. Why it is 1? Just we will come, we will see that shortly. And similarly, if we do that same thing for, uh, for this, it is reaction at B y, reaction at B, B y, uh, C y, it is B y 2 and C y 2. Now, let us call this as system 1 and this as system 2. Okay. And since it is system 1, that is why it is uh, denoted as A y 1, B y 1, C y 1. So, when we say A y 1, B y 1, C y 1, these are the support reactions at A B C in system 1 and similarly B y 2 and C y 2, these are the support reactions at B and C in system 2. Now, in what way system 1 and system 2 are different? System 1 is we have a beam and then the, the and this beam is subjected to an unit load at a distance x and it deflects like this okay so this is the deflected this is the deflected uh, this is the deformation field or deflection field the red deflected line that we can see that gives you the displacement field of the system 1 and the force field in system 1 is unit load acting at a distance x now, system 2 is what? System 2 is uh, the same beam, but this constraint is removed and uh, we have a force F a. We do not know what is the value of force F a, but for some force F a, we have a deflection like this. Okay. Now, the, what is the force field here? Force field is F a, B y 2 and C y 2. These constitute the force field in system 2 and the deflect and deflected um, displacement field is the this one, this red deflected shape. Okay. So, which has deflection delta A at point A, delta X at this point. Okay. Now, this is system 1 and system 2. Now, let us now apply the Betis theorem in a system in, in these two system. Now, what it says that uh, applying Betis, apply Betis theorem, it says that 
summation of force field in system 1 multiplied by displacement field in system 2 is equal to summation of force field in system 2 multiplied by displacement in system 1. Just now we, we just reviewed the Bt's theorem with the same thing here. Now let us see what are the force field we have in system 1 and force, force field in system 1 is Ay and uh, 1 and uh, By and Cy and corresponding displacement field in system 2 is delta A which is uh, which is which corresponds to A1, delta X which corresponds to 1, this is 0 which corresponds to BY1 and this is again 0 which corresponds to CY1. Okay? So, in, in system 1 we have delta in force field in AY and then delta A, delta A is this that is that is positive because the delta the displacement is in the direction of a y and then minus 1 and then force displacement field in system 2. So, 1 multiplied by dx negative because it is in opposite direction. So, this is for system um, this is for uh, force force field multi force field in system 1 multiplied by displacement field in system 2. You see B y 1 and B C y 1 are not considered here because anyway this is B uh, deflection at B and deflection at C is 0. So, their contribution will be again 0. Now, let us see what is force field in system 2 and corresponding displacement field in system 1. So, force field in system 1 is F A and corresponding displacement in uh, system 1 is 0 because at this point your displacement is 0. Similarly, other force field like this and this they will also contribute, z contribute nothing because the corresponding deflection at B and C in system 1 is 0. So, this is equal to, so this gives you this into this 0 means this is 0. So, this gives you a y is equal to delta x minus del, delta x by delta i. So, a y it is actually a y 1, uh, but just to make it general I did not explicitly uh, wrote, the, uh, wrote this 1 here. So, a y becomes delta x by delta a, delta x is this and delta a, delta a is uh, delta a is this. Okay. So, we have let us see what it tells you del a y is equal to delta x by delta i. Now, suppose now this is true for any value of f a and any value of delta i right. Now, let us let us make let us the force is such that delta a is equal to 1. Okay. So, uh, the force is the this deflection at point a is reduced to 1 is scaled to 1. If we do that if delta a is scaled to 1 then what is this? A y become delta x. right? Now, what is delta x? Delta x gives you the deflection, deflection at delta x essentially gives you what? Delta x is the def, def, delta x gives you how the def, it is it is gives you the how the deflect how the deflection varies with x right. So, it is essentially the uh, it is essentially gives us the elastic curve of this or deflected shape of this beam. Okay. Now, then what this says? This says that uh, influence line for a y, influence line for a y is the deflected shape, this deflected shape is given by delta x, this deflected shape corresponding to delta a is equal to 1. So, if we make delta A is equal to 1, then whatever deflected shape we get, that deflected shape will give us the influence line for uh, support reaction at A. So, um, let us let us see the steps then. So, we have the beam here, the continuous same beam. The first step is remove corresponding constraint at A. Suppose we want to find out the influence line diagram for vertical reactions. So, remove the constraint corresponding constraints. So, this is step 1. And then step 2 is lift the beam of support A means lift the beam of support A and that has to be done in the direction of A y. Okay. And then introduce the deflection when you when you are lifting it you lift up to a point when uh, up to a point when the deflection is a deflection at point is 1. So, introduce a unit displacement in the same direction as a y. So, this is 1 and then step 4 is deflected shape 
whatever deflected shape what you get that deflected shape will give you the influence line for a y. So, influence line for a y for this beam is this is the influence line for a y ok. Now, this this value is 1. Now, here one point please note you remember last last time or mm, I mentioned uh, for statically or you have also seen that for statically determinate structure the influence lines whatever uh, we have we have drawn so far they were essentially piecewise linears mean piecewise linear function means they are essentially a collection of some lines. But if the structure is that is true for statically determinate structure, but if the structure is statically indeterminate as you can see here, then the influence line, line may not be may not necessarily be uh, piecewise linear. In this case, it is a nonlinear uh, curve you can see. So, now what is the advantage of this? The advantage of this to just to draw the influence diagram, we did not did not have to uh, did not have to solve the problem, we did not have to find out the support reactions, we did not have to find out the expressions for support reactions. Um, similar thing we will also see for other internal forces as well, but without actually solving the problem we could draw the influence line diagram ok. Now, let us see um, for shear force, suppose again this is the system 1, the same thing, uh, system 1 remains same. Now, suppose we want to find out what is the um, influence line diagram for uh, shear force at D at any intermediate point D between B and C ok. Now, you remember the last class if you want if we wanted to if we want to find out the influence line diagram for A y we had to remove the constraint a corresponding constraint. Now, here we need to find out the influence line diagram for shear. So, again we need to we need to uh, we need to remove the corresponding constraint and what is the corresponding constraint? We need to cut this uh, beam at this point ok. Now, you see this is the shear, this is the shear and if you remember the, uh, the sign convention what we use is if you take any segment of beam then the couple if the couple if the shear force produces clockwise couple then this is positive. So, now this is point D and this portion is this portion and this portion is uh, this portion. So, at point D the shear shear forces are this like this ok. So, what we need to do is we need to cut this beam here and apply shear force V D here, apply corresponding shear force V D here. And then if we do that then what will be the deflection how the how the beam may deflect you see if we consider only this part means a b d d a b d this part which is subjected to of shear force at point d then this part may deflect like this and if we consider part d c now this is hinge and applying a force like this and then this will deflect like this ok now if it is like th then let us say this is delta d b delta d b means delta at point d, um, but this is a part of b d this this beam ok. And then delta d c is again delta at d, but this point is is a part of d c ok. Now, uh, then what happens then uh, this is now system 2. Now, we will apply Betis theorem, Betis theorem says is again force in system 1 uh, multiplied by displacement field in system 2 and then is equal to force in this system 2 multiplied by the displacement field in system 1. Now, um, uh, uh, force field in system 1 is 1 and uh, um, corresponding displacement in system 2 is delta x, force field in system 1 is V d uh, and corresponding displacement in system 2 is this ok delta dc and delta db. So, then uh, and these are the support reactions. Now, let us apply Betis theorem, Betis theorem says this we have already seen it uh, just now. Now, what it says V d multiplied by now V d multiplied by d c into V d multiplied by d b means V d multiplied by d b delta d b plus delta d c and then this is positive because because this is acting V d is act for this segment means D c V d is upward and the deflection is also upward. And for this segment this V d is downward deflection is also downward. So, this is positive and this would be negative because again this is down this force is acting downward, but this deflection is upward. So, this is negative. 
and the rest is 0 because what are the force field we have in system 2? Force field in system 2 is A y 2, B y 2 and C y 2 and corresponding deflection in system 1 is 0, 0, 0. So, these force fields will not contribute anything. So, this will be 0 right and it says that V d is equal to delta x by this and then we have V d is equal to delta x by um, this. Now, again similar to the previous case uh, support reaction if we if we scale this delta d b delta d b plus delta d c gives you the this entire entire part right. If we scale this to 1 then what is v d? v d is equal to delta x and what is delta x? Delta x is delta x gives us the deflected shape of the beam ok. When now uh, so and v d and then how what this equation tells us this equation tells us that v d will be same as the deflected shape in system 2 the so if we know the deflected shape in system 2 we know the v d of system 1 so what this equation tells us that influence line for v d for v d is the deflected shape corresponding to delta d b plus delta d c is equal to 1 so if we make delta d, if we cut this section if we cut this section at d and 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 introduce introduce a deflect introduce a deflection such that this plus this is equal to 1 then whatever deflected shape we get that will be the influence line diagram for vd okay now similarly uh, if we do for if we do for um, uh, moment um, now the proof of this I leave it to you the same way you can prove that uh, if we make suppose this is the moment this is our sign convention. Now due to this moment m d what will be the deflected shape of a b d will be this and for this moment m d deflected shape of uh, deflected shape of d c will be this ok. Now this angle is theta 1 and this angle is theta 2 or theta d b and theta d c. Now, if we make this this theta, this theta d b plus theta d c is equal to 1, then we get m d is equal to delta x. So, what, it's, what it says? It says that if you want to find out the influence line diagram for any particular point, then, then again in the previous, again like the previous cases, we need to release the constraint and what is the corresponding constraint what is the associated constraint for moment the associated constraint for moment is rotation right uh, like associated constraint for shear is the relative displacement and associated constraint for moment is uh, rotation so if we if we release the constraint and allow this rotation is allowed means if we introduce a hinge here if we release this constraint means introducing a hinge here and then and then after introducing the hinge if we rotate this beam uh, such that uh, if we allow a rotation such that this plus this is equal to 1 then whatever deflected shape we get that will be the uh, influence line diagram for delta x. So, influence line diagram for m d influence line diagram for m d is the deflected shape corresponding to theta d b plus theta d c is equal to 1 ok. So, now Again, if you if you see here, we we did not solve uh, a, we haven't solved any um, we haven't really de derived the equation expression for what is the how the bending moments or shear force or support reaction they vary as a function of x. Or oh, we did not still it is indeterminate problem. Uh, in even in indeterminate problem we could, we could see that without actually solving the uh, problem finding the expression for internal forces uh, just by having a sense of deflected shape we can uh, we can uh, draw the influence line diagram uh, for these beams and that uh, that is true for statically determinate structure as well we'll see some example for that so now in order to apply this principle what is very important is to having is to is is having a sense of deflected shape so i have told you many times and probably the rest of the course i will be telling you many more times as well that uh, 
solving examples problem is fine, writing expression, applying equilibrium conditions is fine, but at the end of the day what is very important is to develop a sense. So, so that through that you can visualize the response of the structure, right? You can visualize the deflected shape of this structure, you can visualize the bending moment shear force diagram of the structure, action force of the structure. Until and unless that visualization come, uh, you, 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 we have not then understood structural analysis. Well, that is very important. Now, in order to apply this, this, this principle, that visualization, that sense is very much important. Okay. Now, let us let me demonstrate this to um, through one example once again. Let us quickly. Okay. Before that, then what this uh, what the what Muller based press law principle says? It says the influence line for any force response function. You please please note the force. When I say force response function. It could be support reaction, it could be shear force at any particular point, it could be bending moment at any particular point. So, in general, it is written as a force response function in a structure is given by the deflected shape of the structure resulting from a unit displacement or rotation corresponding to the force and moment under consideration. So, if it is force, then it is corresponding to unit displacement. And if it is moment, then correspond to it corresponds to unit rotation. So, if you want to find out the deflected, if you want to find out the influence line diagram, what we have to do is we have to um, we have to release that particular constraint and apply the associated uh, displacement or rotation and get the deflected shape, and that deflected shape will give you the uh, influence line. Okay. Now, quickly give you uh, quickly give you. One example demonstration. Suppose this is a statically it is a statically determinate structure, a simply supported beam. We want to find out. Uh, we have seen this example before. We want to find. We want to draw the influence line for a, influence line for support reaction at A, support reaction at B, and bending and shear force at C. Okay. Now let's. What is the uh, step? Remove corresponding constraint at A. Constraint is removed. Then lift the beam off the support A. So it is lifted off the support A. Now, you see since it is only it is hinge here. So, there is no intermediate step support. So, if you lift it, it will rotate about this point B. So, it is it, it remains linear and then introduce the unit displacement and uh, this is the deflected shape and if this is unit displacement and this will be the uh, influence line for A y. We have seen it. Uh, Let us do it for B y again release the uh, remove the corresponding constant at B, corresponding constant is removed and then lift the beam off the support. Uh, now, this is uh, lifted off um, from support B and then it, it moves like this and we need to lift it until this deflection becomes 1 and the introduce the displacement is 1 at By is 1 and then this displacement is 1 and then this will be the influence, the deflected shape, deflected shape will be this uh, line like this and this deflected shape will be the ben, uh, influence line diagram for B y. Let us see for C, uh, again cut the shear resistance at C. So, at C we need to we need to cut the beam and apply corresponding uh, act, apply corresponding displacement. So, introduce unit separation at the cut points in the direction. Uh, this is very important because you see in which direction you want to you want to you know you, you want to you want to you want to introduce the deflection you that has to be consistent with the sign of shear force we have taken okay so we know the what is the sign convention for shear force and the separation has to be made consistent with that sign convention and that's true for moment as well now this is the separation and we need to do it until and unless this 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 separation becomes uh, uh, becomes one and this will be the influence line diagram for bc and again we have seen it you see this separation is one this is 0.5 this is minus 0.5 the minus is written because it is negative the absolute value should be one same for um, same for moment so remove the moment resistance when you remove the moment resistance means we need to introduce a hinge here then introduce the unit rotation theta 1 and theta 2. Theta 1 means you see this is the now you once it is once the constraint is removed moment constraint is removed means now introduce an hinge here. Now, it is free to rotate there is no constraint against rotation 
and suppose these rotations are like this, this is theta 1 and this is theta 2 and we need to do it until and unless then theta 1 plus theta 2 becomes 1 and once then theta 1 and theta 2 becomes 1, the deflected shape what you get that deflected shape will be the influence line diagram uh, for M C. Now, you see in this case C is the midpoint. Okay. So, theta 1 and theta 2 will be same. If this distance is L, then this distance become this distance become L by 2. Now, total theta 1 and theta 2 is equal to 1. So, theta 1 is equal theta 1 has to be half and theta 2 has to be half. So, if theta 1 is half and this distance is L by 2, so this becomes half into L by 2 means L by 4. Okay. So, the values we can obtain by this condition. So, this is how the influence line diagram can be drawn. Now, quickly uh, one more example. Suppose this is the propped cantilever beam with uh, with one uh, with one internal hinge at point C. What we want to find out? We want to do it uh, for we want to uh, we want to draw the influence line diagram for uh, for um, reactions at A and B, and then um, at any intermediate point at any intermediate point D. Uh, what is the shear and moment? Okay. Now before I before I draw you, let me let me give you let me demonstrate that through one through one simple model. Okay. Now uh, suppose this is the this is the model. Okay. Hmm? This is the beam. Okay. Okay. Let us first draw the beam. Uh, the beam is a cantilever beam. A propped cantilever beam. We have a propped here. And then in addition to that, we have an internal hinge here. Okay? And this is A, this is B, this is C and this is D. What we want is, we want to find out what is the influence line diagram at support reaction at A, support reaction at B and at any intermediate point D what would be the force and moment. Let us do it for support reaction first. Okay? Now, this is the beam. Okay, suppose this point is A, this point is C, uh, which is the hinge here, this hinge here, and this point is B. Let us first let us first draw the support reaction uh, influence line diagram for B. First thing is we need to release the constraint. Okay, once we, this point is now fixed, we release the constraint, but point A is still fixed, and then we have a hinge at C. We need to release the constraint. Once the constraint is released, then we need to apply unit displacement here, unit displacement here. So, release the constraint, release the constraint here and apply unit displacement. Okay? So, this is the deflected shape of the beam. Now, if this is the deflected shape, what will be the influence line diagram? Influence line diagram for beam will be, uh, for at support reaction will be this. This is 1, this is A and this is B. You see? This is this is A, this is C, and this is B. This is C. This is C. So this is the influence line diagram for C. Okay. And you please go back to your previous classes and see. We we have we 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 we, we have um, um, addressed this problem, and uh, influence line diagram for this problem were drawn. Okay, and you compare this with your previously obtained influence line diagram. Okay, now let us draw the influence line diagram for uh, for support reaction at A. Now support reaction at this now this point is B, which is supported here, so the, it cannot move. Now support reaction A means we need to find out say support. Uh, let us for find out A Y. A Y means this constant needs to be released. This constant release means it, this beam, this point of the beam can move. Uh, in this direction, but this point cannot rotate and cannot uh, move in this direction. The so, only constraint needs to be released is a y uh, uh, associated with a y, which is the vertical direction of this point, of of this point. So this is this is uh, this is uh, this cannot move. This is hinge. It is free to do any whatever it wants, and then this has to be moved vertically upward. And so the but this there will be no rotation for this uh, part a c. Now, if we do that, 
this will be the deflected shape. So this point which was initially here, it now comes here. So this is the deflected shape. Okay. Then then what would be the uh, what would be the uh, influence line diagram? Influence line diagram will be. This is A C B. This is for A B Y. This is for A Y. Okay. Now this is the influence line diagram for uh, A Y. Now let's find out influence line diagram for M A. Influence line diagram for M A means then uh, we need to release this constraint. And what is this constraint? Now point A can be the rotation at point A is allowed and what is our sign convention? Our sign convention is this, our sign convention is that is uh, that is sagging moment right that is our sign convention this is ma. So, now rotation is allowed, rotation at point A is allowed and but no translation right. Now this point is fixed here, this point is this point is cannot move, this point cannot move but this point and this point they can rotate and if they can rotate then this will be the deformation of the beam, deformation in the beam right. Now this is the deflected shape then what would be the uh, what would be the uh, influence line diagram? Influence line diagram will be. Now what what would be this value? This is 1, this is 1, 1 then what would be this value? what would be this value? You see this, this, this angle has to be 1. Okay? This angle has to be 1. Okay? If this angle, this total angle is 1 and now this, this length is, if this length is A, you will see that this distance will be minus A, minus A. This is for MA, this is for MA. Okay? Now let us do it for uh, let us do it for last two things what is for VD and for uh, MD. Now for VD we need to cut, we need to cut it here right and what, if we need to cut it here suppose I have another segment here this is another segment okay. This is another segment. So this point is, so this point is A, this point is C this point is D and this point is um, suppose and this point is um, B. Okay? Now at point D, this point is D, this point is D. So we need to draw the shear force diagram, we need to draw the um, uh, uh, influence line for shear force, so we need to cut it. Okay. Now it has to be separated. How it has to be separated? Now our sign convention as per our sign convention, the shear force at this limb at this point will be in this direction and shear force at this point will be in this direction okay? and this. So if we, if we do this, if we, if we apply this then this will move like this. This end is fixed and if we apply a force like this, this will move like this. So this is the deflected shape. Okay. And then what would be the influence line diagram? Influence line diagram will be, this is the, you see there is, this is up to this 0, then this and then this. So influence line diagram will be up to point C it is 0, 0, then, then from here it is this and from here it is this. Okay. This is the influence line diagram for um, uh, VD. So, this is VD. So, this distance, this total distance has to be 1, this total separation has to be 1. And you please compare these influence line diagrams with the uh, influence line diagram you have already obtained for the same problem by, by, uh, by deriving the expression. Okay, the last thing is la let us draw the influence line diagram for uh, bending moment at D we need to release the corresponding constraint and corresponding constraint is we need to introduce a hinge here right uh, so that rotation is allowed. Now let us introduce a hinge here. Suppose we introduce an hinge here. Okay. This hinge is already there, it, is, it was there in the original structure and this hinge we introduce at point D. So this is, hmm. 
this point is A, this point is A, this point is C, this point is D where we introduce this hinge and finally, this point is um, B, this point is B. Okay? Now, let us, let us now then we need to apply the moment. Okay? Now, if we apply the moment, it means we need to apply the moment here and apply moment here. That is our sign, that is as per our sign convention and if we do that, then this will move like this, this will deflect like this. Okay? So, this angle, now this, if we take this, this angle is theta 1 and this angle is theta 2 and this theta 1 plus theta 2 has to be 1. Okay. Then what would be the deflect, what would be the influence line diagram? Influence line diagram will be from A to C it is 0 and then C to B and B to D, C to D and D to B, it varies like a tenth function. So, influence line diagram will be for this is this and then from A to C it is 0 and then it varies like this. So, this is A, C, B, D. You can get, you can get this value by just, uh, by, 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 um, by checking that this angle and this angle, uh, their summation is 1. Okay? So, you see and you can do it, you can, you can take it as puzzle, you can take it as, you can take it as fun, take any example, any structure and try to draw the influence line diagram. But interesting thing is, to draw that, you really do not have to solve the problem. You need, only you need is to have a, you need to, you need to have a sense of reflected shape of the beam. So, uh, we stop here today. Uh, there are many examples given in the book. Please do that and, and check whether the intuition, what the intuition you have or you have been developing that is uh, in the right direction or not. Okay. So, this was the end of our first part of this uh, these entire course where we, we, we studied various methods to determine uh, um, to, to analyze statically determine a structure, uh, finding the response uh, means internal forces and then uh, b displacement of the structure. Uh, but in many, in most of the practical cases, the structures are not statically determinate, structures are actually statically indeterminate structure. What we will do from next week is we will see, uh, first we will see what is statically indeterminate structure, how to characterize uh, the indeterminacy of a structure and then see. Uh, various methods to uh, to analyze or to find internal forces and displacement in statically indeterminate structures. See you next week. Thank you.